Hi guys, CS Paula, the crazy ozone lady with a new edition of the ozone news. So this is episode six, I believe. And so I will cover the latest articles in the world of ozone therapy and ozone in general. So not only ozone therapy, but also just general ozone and also oxygen. So before we start, please make sure to subscribe to my newsletter. So just go to thepowerofozone.com slash news and type in your name and uh, email address or just your email address and you will be notified when my new book comes out. And there are also many more plans. So whenever I come, I publish a book, you will be one of the first to, to learn and to receive special discounts and special uh, special yeah, sales and, and such. Uh, so I have prepared some overview of all the stories that we will talk about today. So number one, there is a new Forbes magazine article uh, where they discuss a, an addition, a gadget to a washing machine so that you are able to wash your clothes without using a detergent and without using hot water. And number two is uh, will be a small case study of two children who were sick with meningitis, so basically brain inflammation, which was in both cases was resistance to antibiotics. So ozone therapy was tried, and uh, well, we'll see what happens then. Another story is whether Italy is becoming an ozone therapy mecca. There are really great, exciting things happening in Italy. There are more ozone clinics are opening up. So it seems like Italy is on the forefront of ozone therapy. The next story will be a school superintendent in Georgia who had uh, several ozone machines, aqueous ozone machines installed in elementary schools and he got completely trashed for it. Next story will be 500 patients with uh, the novel virus. The, you know what, I'm not going to mention it here, but uh, I assume you know what I mean. And they were treated with ozone therapy in India and they recovered relatively quickly. Next story will be oxygen shortages will be probably come will probably come to an end because certain regulations which cause the uh, shortages have been now removed. Next story is Shane van Gisbergen, who is a race car driver in New Zealand. He says he's using hyperbaric oxygen therapy to recover from a collarbone injury. And something very exciting, something that I've just discovered literally a couple of hours ago is that a product that I've known about for over 10 years and which I have been using on and off and my dad has been using uh, the Ozone Elite Cream is now available on the US Amazon. So this is really, this is really exciting because this is an awesome product and it's cheap. And then as a last point, we will cover some testimonials. So vaginal insufflations and headaches and DIV direct intravenous uh, ozone injections and shingles and varicose veins. All right, so uh, then let's begin. So the first story, this is, you see, uh, Forbes magazine. And uh, Anthony Karch, he wrote this article entitled, I washed week old gym clothes without detergent and I'm never going back. So what he's saying here is that he used this O3 Waterworks Aqueous Ozone Laundry System. And you can see a picture of it uh, here. So this is basically the, the washing machine. And here you see this is the, the water source. And so basically you, you attach this thing, this, this ozone producing gadgets above your washing machine. And so the water runs through it. That thing produces ozone. It makes ozone out of the water. And then this ozonated water flows into your washing machine. And so he tried this out and he says it was one of those things that sounded way too good to be true. But as we all find out, it turns out that it actually was as good as it sounded or even better. 
And so he says here, I was so impressed by the results. I haven't touched my laundry detergent in a month and I don't think I will ever again. <laughs> So by the way, I have never done this. I have never washed my clothes in ozonated water, but it sounds, it sounds great. So here, another picture of this product, this Waterworks Aqueous Ozone. And it uses, for the ozone geeks among you, it uses a diamond electrolytic cell. So basically the ozone is produced through electrolysis instead of through a um, corona discharge uh, cell. And so um, he says, so does it actually work? Yes, it absolutely does work. So, so he, they tried an experiment, so they washed their clothes. So he has a, a household of four people. And so they washed uh, their clothes with this new ozone solution. And he said, emboldened by the experiment, my household has spent the last month doing load after load not using a drop of detergent, detergent or softener, which is interesting. So it's not only that it replaces the detergent, but also softener. And he says again and again, our clothes have come out clean, soft and just as good, if not better than if we'd used chemicals to clean them. Wow, amazing. But he says there's one downside to this so you can only wash clothes when you uh, wash colored clothes so they have to be color fast if they're non-color fast then they will get bleached so you have to make sure if you wash colored clothes that they're color fast but he says uh, having having seen some of a few of his garments uh, lose their color it was a small price to pay for the fact that the funk I'd come to associate with my washer has disappeared in the weeks that we've been using the system. The slimy ring I had to keep cleaning out from around the door seal drying up as well. So anyone who has been, uh, who has been dealing with washing machines knows that there's this slimy kind of thing that is, tends to build up around the, the door seal. Uh, but also uh, sometimes like where um, in, the, in that compartment where you drop uh, the detergent, uh, there's uh, also tends to be slime that builds up in washing machines. And he said that the ozone removed even that slime, which is another completely awesome thing. So I think this alone, this makes it worth to, to use this, uh, to use this gadget. And he s says, this is, this is surprising that there was no real scent. So you could not smell the ozone neither on the clothes nor around the washing machine while this thing was running. Uh, so it's amazing. So you don't, uh, you don't use any detergent. It's you wash the clothes in cold water, not hot water. So you're saving also on energy because the water doesn't have to be heated up. And so he says he calculated that for a four uh, person household, he says that there are spending around $600 per year on detergents, which to me, it sounds a lot, but you know, maybe, maybe that's true. And so he says that it totally pays off because this, this uh, thing, this gadget, this O3 Waterworks costs three ninety nine, so $400. So, so he says it's, it's totally worth it. Plus you also save the costs for, um, for, for heat, for the hot water, right? So he says, I'll save at least $400 in laundry staples and hot water costs in the first year alone. So this sounds pretty good. So yeah, so this has nothing to do with ozone therapy, but uh, this is a positive article about an ozone product in mainstream news because Forbes magazine, I would definitely consider this mainstream news. So you know what? I take it. We take anything we can get, right? Uh, so, so this is great. And this makes me actually really curious about this thing. Um, so maybe more people will, uh, will, um, test it out, try it out and then report how, how they are dealing with this, how they are liking this product. All right. So next, next, uh, next story is this case study. So this comes from Sweden and this is not new actually, it's from 2015, but I've come across it only recently. I've never read this earlier, 
as far as I can remember. So basically here we have two small children. So case number one, this was a two month old infant and what this infant had was hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus, this is basically the accumulation of liquids or fluids in inside the brain. And at the same time, there was a, a infection with Pseudomonas aeruginosa staphylococcus aureus. So those are two gram negative bacteria. And uh, that child was given different antibiotics and it had no effect. So the infection had become resistant or non responsive to antibiotics. So what they decided to do instead is something completely new. I've never heard of this done before and they call it, uh, they call it ozone therapy intrathecally. So intrathecally means subarachnoid. So subarachnoid, that means basically, you, know, you see here, uh, let's see if I can make this bigger. So, so the brain is protected, so to say, by different layers. So when you look from the outside, going in so that you can see that on the outside there is hair there's skin then you have the bone of the skull and then you have different um, membranes or different inner skin layers so to say and one of the last uh, layers is the arachnoid layer and so uh, basically so they injected into the subarachnoid space so this is between one of those um, membranes the arachnoid and the pyre matter i believe so this is very very close to the actual the actual brain so so this is some highly um highly invasive treatment that they performed completely novel thing and so, okay, so what was the result? Oh, so, okay, so first of all, what did they do exactly? Uh, so they extracted some of the cerebrospinal fluids. They, ex they extracted 50 milliliters and they mixed it with first 20 micrograms per milliliter or gamma of ozone. Later, they increased the ozone concentration to 40 micrograms per milliliter. So they took those 50 milliliters of the cerebrospinal fluid they extracted from the brain of the child, mixed it with 25 milliliters of this ozone oxygen mixture. They mixed it and then they re-injected this ozonated cerebrospinal fluid. And they repeated this five times for the first child and the child recovered completely. So this is, uh, this is quite astonishing what they did. And so if you're asking yourself how they did this, how did they extract this cerebrospinal fluid from the child? So apparently there was a shunt that was placed and that allowed them to access the brain and the, the spinal fluids uh, easily. And then they did exactly the same thing with the second child, which was also not much older. It was a three month year old. So it was a baby, still a, 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 a small baby. It was also a bacterial infection that happened that caused meningitis. Again, the child was um, not responsive to antibiotic treatment. So they again decided the same thing. Uh, the same procedure, they drew cerebrospinal fluids, mixed it with ozone, and then re-injected it. And after six sessions, there was a full recovery. So this is, you know, this is a great example of what one can achieve with ozone gas and uh, with, with ozone therapy. And this also shows that there are new approaches, new ways to use ozone therapy the whole time. So there are still uh, unexplored novel ways to use ozone therapy that, uh, that we don't even know about, right? And one of those is what they did here, basically mixing cere cerebrospinal fluids uh, with ozone and then re-injecting it. And, uh, you know, meningitis, brain inflammation, brain infection, inflammation, this is something extremely serious. I probably don't have to explain this. 
and there are probably hundreds, thousands of people and children which get sick with this. So again, you know, the question is how many more people could have been saved, uh, their lives could have been saved and also the side effects that, uh, that often linger even after people recover from such uh, serious brain infections. Because people who recover from brain infections, you know, you can remove the infection, but oftentimes there are debilitating uh, adverse effects or the, the debilitating remaining symptoms uh, which never go away. And so the question is, okay, what if this was used on a larger scale? How many more people could have been saved, could be saved every year all around the world, right? Uh, but well, maybe sooner or later at some point we will find out. All right, next story is, um, so this is, let me translate this here to English with Google Translate. All right, so this is something that uh, appeared in a local Italian uh, news outlet. And uh, so they're talking here about what all the great things that you can do with ozone, and you can treat cellulite and cervical problems and many more things. But in reality, what this is, this is said here, you see, sponsored content. So this is really just an ad and an ad for a new ozone, oxygen ozone therapy clinic in Palermo. Palermo, this is the capital of Sicily, which belongs to Italy. And there is a Dr. Francesca Balsamo, who apparently opened this new ozone, oxygen ozone therapy clinic. So this is basically uh, what I've been reading quite often recently. So some of you may not know, but I actually speak and read Italian. So I also follow the uh, news, uh, Italian news on ozone therapy. And so this comes up quite often. So, so basically in an ozone clinic pays a news outlet to write an article like this. And so it appears to be an article about ozone therapy, but in reality, this is an article that announces the opening of a new ozone practice or ozone clinic. And I've been reading those, those types of ads or announcements. Uh, there are quite a number of them have been, is specifically in Italy, and uh, which is quite astounding because Italy seems to be one of the very few countries where they have clinics. So those are private clinics which specialize on ozone therapy. So some of you uh, I believe this, which really is a myth, that, that Germany, that there's, you know, ozone clinics on every corner and there's like, that Germany is this ozone therapy mecca. But no, it appears actually that this is true for Italy, not so much in Germany. In Germany, I don't know of any single ozone therapy clinic. I don't know of any clinic that specializes specifically on ozone therapy, but in Italy, there seems to be a quite a bunch of them. And you know, you know, and not only this, but also the fact that uh, in 2020, Italy was on the forefront of using ozone therapy on the novel virus. There were, there were around 16 or 17 hospitals in Northern Italy, which used ozone therapy on COVID patients. And this was also one, one of a kind, like on that scope, uh, that many hospitals, that many patients that, uh, that got treated, this was really unprecedented in the world. Yes, Spain also had a few hospitals, but it was, I think, just two or three. So Italy appears to be the new ozone therapy mecca. And also when you read the reviews and testimonials of uh, people who sometimes comment on, on Facebook pages. You know, so for example, an ozone therapy clinic, they, they tend to have Facebook pages and then you can leave a review. And when you read those of those Italian clinics, there are so many and the people who, re, uh, who leave those reviews are so enthusiastic, so passionate, that it really appears that ozone therapy is very, very popular in Italy. So, um, so yeah, so this is something that I, I will keep an eye on. And um, this is quite encouraging. 
All right, next story is here. So um, a school superintendent in Georgia, Cobb County, uh, what he did, he bought a bunch of those uh, aqueous ozone hand rinsing, hand sanitizing gadgets, and he had them installed in elementary schools all over Cobb County. And then he got completely trashed for it. So he got completely wrecked for it. So he got a lot of a lot of criticism, uh, criticism for it. And partially it was quite um, uh, justified, in my opinion, because so uh, those things here, they cost seventeen thousand dollars a pop. OK, so uh, so he paid the county paid seventeen thousand dollars for each one of those machines. So in total, the bill uh, came up to $12 million. So I believe this is absolutely too much. This is quite an outrageous price, but you know, this is really what happens when companies do business with the government. Because if you're a company and you are selling something to the government, then of course you won't sell it for the going market price, but you will make a special price, the government, which will be multiple times higher than your normal price, because you know that the government has essentially unlimited resources. They can get money in unlimited amounts. So so this is really what happens is when, when the government buys something for citizens, then the costs are always end up to be enormous. So yeah, 17,000 is definitely too much in my opinion. This should have not cost more than a few thousand, maybe two or three thousand tops, in my opinion. So, yeah, so he got totally uh, trashed for it. But um, so the idea, he, he, I think he intended well, because what he wanted to do is basically offer an extra sanitizing option for now for the new virus. Uh, so, th so the idea was to basically kill the coronavirus with those things. And uh, but then uh, it um, they found out that there really was no evidence that those things can actually kill uh, the uh, this novel virus. Um, they found two studies which showed that uh, which actually proved or claimed that yes, uh, ozone does kill uh, the novel virus. But it turned out they were not peer reviewed. Well, of course, if they're not peer reviewed, then uh, then they cannot be uh, those cannot be valid studies. Right. So but what is interesting is like how much this was scrutinized and how in depth they looked into all those things. And so I doubt very much that when it comes to spending money on other things, that they're as scrutinized as as this thing was scrutinized. So. So I believe, yes, the county definitely got screwed over, I think, because they paid too much. Uh, but uh, it, it's not like, uh, you know, apart from the financial uh, financial problem that this was, you know, some horrendous uh, error or horrendous failure that that needed all this heightened scrutiny and some committee that was set up uh, and so on and so forth. So, so this kind of shows that, you know, when Ozone tries to go mainstream in the smallest way, it gets completely um, trashed and, and shut down. And that seems to be exactly what happened to this superintendent who came up, who came up with this idea. All right, uh, next story is uh, something that happened in India, the subcontinent with, I believe, uh, how many inhabitants they have one 1.4 billion or, or something. And so what many are not aware of is that ozone therapy is quite popular in India and there are thousands of practitioners who use ozone therapy. And so here this article that uh, was published in Business News this week uh, says doctors recommend path breaking recover and immunity building solutions with ozone therapy towards COVID and tuberculosis, TB stands for tuberculosis, which is very interesting. So because for tuberculosis, tuberculosis, this is a, a serious health problem, tuberculosis, since um, hundreds of thousands of people get sick with tuberculosis every day. And there are many, many deaths attributed to tuberculosis. Uh, I think even more than, uh, than due to the novel virus. 
And so if ozone therapy uh, was to be used for tuber tuberculosis, and, I, and again, like how many more lives could be saved? And this is exactly what here Dr. Millie Shah, Dr. Millie Shah, so this is this woman here. She is the um, founder, I believe, or a brainchild. Or, no, sorry, uh, not. Um, uh, she is the, the the head of Ozone Forum of India. So this is a an outlet, a, a news outlet, and a um, news ozone therapy platform uh, that is geared towards ozone therapists in India. And she is. She seems to be a great fan of ozone therapy. This is her, Dr. Mili Shah, president, Ozone Forum of India. And she says that a total of 500 patients, including across various comorbid conditions, out of which 77% have recovered within five days and the rest recovered by the eighth day as per clinical trials conducted in mid-2020. And they recovered with the help of ozone therapy. She says that doctors recommended that ozone therapy should be taking up to 15 sessions after uh, after the novel virus. So she says basically, so this article informs us about those 500 people who have recovered uh, within five to eight days from this novel virus um, after doing ozone therapy. Now, the downside here is that the article does not have any link to any official paper, to any official study where this was uh, where this was written down or where this was documented. So we don't know exactly what this is based on, those 500 patients. Was this an officially uh, conducted and officially organized trial uh, where everything was documented, uh, where tests were performed before and after or what is this based on? Or is it, is this, are those just uh, uh, observations that were done by several doctors or by one doctor? What exactly was done? So unfortunately, there is no link to any such study, no any reference. But they say that those 500 patients were treated at those two hospitals here. One is Lokmania Hospital in Pune or Pune and Neurogen Brain and Spine Institute in Mumbai. Neurogen Brain and Spine Institute, this could be actually a private clinic, I'm not sure. And so Dr. Mili Shah, she here says, we are happy to announce that ozone therapy works well on, uh, you can see here, uh, C-virus patients as both our trial reports showed, and most importantly, it is also very cost effective. This, this is true. She, she reports that there are over 2,400 doctors in India who successfully believe and use ozone therapy. Then here is Dr. Alok Sharma. This is this man here, um, a doctor of neurosurgery. And he says, we used ozone therapy on healthcare workers who started developing the infection and the ones who were administered ozone therapy recovered faster. So again, we don't know, is this an additional study an additional trial clinical trial that was performed to those 500 that dr mili shah reported on or is this the same thing that they're talking about it's not clear but here again what i mentioned above so they mentioned that ozone therapy is a valid treatment for tuberculosis uh, here it is said ozone therapy used as ozonated water and saline helps patients to recover and in the disappearance of pus, improving their general well-being. So pus uh, is uh, created in people who have tuberculosis in their lungs, I believe. Most importantly, appetite improves for patients within one month and they regain their lost weight. Over 400 patients were administered ozone therapy to date in Mumbai and were helped to recover. And I think he means 400 tuberculosis patients. But again, it's not clear because we don't know what those assertions are based off. But so hopefully something will be published officially in the, in the coming uh, days or weeks. So we will know exactly what was done, what forms of ozone therapy were performed, were the tests that, uh, that showed that people really had tuberculosis, they really had the C virus. 
So hopefully we have something more concrete in the coming days. And here also another Dr. Lalit Kumar Anandes, specialty in drug resistance, tuberculosis, complications and antioxidant therapies, says, it is such mentioned multiple conditions where the patients no, it is in such mentioned multiple conditions where the patient's survival rate is at its lowest point that we realized a very fast-acting antimicrobial, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory properties of ozone therapy. Usage of ozone resulted in reducing the pus infection, its foul smell, joint aches, and improved appetite and overall comfort for patients. So again, he's talking specifically about tuberculosis patients. So if ozone therapy were recognized as a valid treatment for tuberculosis, I think this would be absolutely fantastic. But, you know, who knows what's going to happen next. All right, another story is oxygen and regulation. So this is interesting because some people may have read recently that there were oxygen shortages in hospitals. And as I reported earlier, part of the problem was because oxygens, uh, because hospitals changed their approach to treating people with acute respiratory syndrome. Um, namely, they uh, start instead of uh, putting people on ventilators, they started giving them high flow oxygen to breathe just through a rebreather mask. And so this uh, increased the demand for oxygen and many hospitals had also an obsolete infrastructure that could not handle this increased demand. So this was one, one reason why there were oxygen shortages, but, for, but there was also another reason. And this other reason, it seems, was something that was called a budget neutrality for oxygen. And so this is interesting for a number of reasons, because this shows that many regulations which really are very damaging but they are sold to the public with nice sounding names or positive sounding concepts because when you hear neutrality budget neutrality this in me at least it has a positive on me it has a positive effect because neutral that means it's not biased right neutrality is good it's 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 objectivity neutrality right but yet it turned out that this budget neutrality that for oxygen was a certain uh, regulation which included price controls for oxygen. So it is, uh, this is what, it, and, and this budget neutrality regulation has now been abandoned. And this budget neutrality regulation was what was responsible in part for the oxygen shortages. Why? Because this regulation included price controls for oxygen. All right, so it's explained here. The bipartisan legislation eliminated the requirement that CMS, which stands for Centers for Medicare and Medical Medicaid Services, cut rates for certain types of home oxygen equipment. So basically, CMS, so Medicare and Medicaid, was forced to reduce rates to reduce prices for home oxygen equipment and this led to shortages why because if you say that uh, that a producer of uh, oxygen equipment is not allowed to sell uh, his equipment above a certain price uh, then you're basically telling him you cannot make enough profit or you cannot make any profit, and then you basically remove the incentive for the producer to produce those that those oxygen equipments, right? And and this led to shortages logically. So they now remove those price controls, and they say these cuts had historically made it more difficult for patients to access liquid oxygen and oxygen concentrators, right? So those price controls, though that were part of this budget neutrality made it more difficult for patients to access oxygen equipment and which now face severe global shortages due to skyrocketing skyrocketing demand during the pandemic yeah uh, but yeah it was shortages you know not not because only because of the demand but also because of the regulations because oxygen is one of the most abundant molecules uh, on our planet 
So there really is no reason for it, uh, for there to be shortages in that sector, uh, and only if the government steps in and uh, institutes some stupid uh, regulations, which now it seems have been abandoned. So hopefully this will now remove the shortages. All right, next story is Shane Van, Van Giesbergen, who is apparently a New York race car driver. He has sustained a collarbone. He broke his collarbone in a mountain biking accident. So this had apparently nothing to do with his race car uh, career, race car driving career. Uh, but it's mentioned here that he is using hyperbaric oxygen chamber to promote healing of the injury. So this is just another in many uh, stories that shows that um, yeah, oxygen and also ozone therapy is slowly or at, at certain points and isolated points is, is breaking through to athletes and to celebrities. Uh, because uh, recently we also, in, in, the, in the last edition of the Ozone News, I also reported that Shaquille O'Neal was now undergoing ozone therapy. He has signed up for 10 pass ozone treatments. Before that, we also heard that Madonna has used ozone therapy. And I think it was also multi-passes um, uh, multi or um, possibly 10 passes. So there are those isolated cases where celebrities or athletes uh, use oxygen or ozone therapy. And this uh, appears to be uh, another another such story. Okay, um, next next story. Let's see if I'm if I'm missed something. So let's check. Let's check my overview. All right, so we have everything covered here. Okay, so right. So okay, this is really exciting. So this is this ozone elite cream. So let me show you what uh, what this is. So the ozone elite cream, this is the product here. So I've known about this product for over 10 years. And the first time that I used it, I think was around 2009 or 2010. And the very first time I used it, I actually saw a reduction in my fine wrinkles. But it was just the first time since I then I could not recreate the effect. But also I have a connective tissue disorder. So maybe that's the reason why it doesn't work that well for me. But this this cream, this is an Italian product. And I think this is uh, very new on Amazon. I don't think that you could buy it on Amazon on the on the US Amazon uh, until recently. And you see, it also has no reviews here at all. But when you go to the it Italian Amazon site or the German Amazon, then you will see it has hundreds of very positive reviews. So I think they are brand new here on the American Amazon. And so this is really exciting because this is an absolutely awesome product, but it is officially sold to cyclists. Now, I'm not a cyclist. I've never been a cyclist, so I don't know exactly what they use it for. I think it's like around the the bum area. <laughs> I, I don't know how to call it. I think if you sit on the saddle for too long, then there may be some, uh, you know, some irritation of your skin. So it's possibly for that. I'm not sure. Um, what I used it for is I applied it on my skin and my dad, he had several outbreaks of eczema. My dad has some uh, autoimmune condition, and so his skin regularly develops uh, certain like inflammatory patches, like eczema, basically. And so uh, I told him to use this cream for those patches, and they go away. So this cream works for eczema and uh, and for possibly many other things. And so, and this is a really great product. Now, the reason why I love this product is because I hate ozonated oils, like ozonated olive oil or ozonated uh, jojoba oil or what. They just stink horrendously, in my opinion. And they also make my skin, um, they cause inflammation on my skin. Although I, I haven't heard this from many other people, maybe one other person that I heard this. So, so this is unusual. Again, this may have to do with the fact that I have this connective tissue disorder. But yeah, I do not like ozonated uh, 
oils um, and they also are they are oily they're very oily and so when I found this cream this is completely different so this cream is, is white it looks just like a cream and it doesn't stink there is a very very faint ozone smell but is it's pleasant it's not oily and it's just amazing so and it costs here only 30 bucks and this is 150 milliliters so this is more than five fluid ounces here it says five five point one fluid ounces so this is this is really a great deal now um, but there's a but so this cream is not uh, completely like organic and 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 just you know if you are a, a, a like a natural purist where you want uh, all ingredients in your cream to be uh, completely natural then this cream is not for you now I tried to find online the ingredients list of this uh, of this cream and unfortunately I can't find it it's also not listed here anywhere the ingredients they're nowhere to be found uh, but I remember from holding that cream in my hand I remember that there there are definitely some chemicals in there okay so this is not all natural so if you're some kind of purist that cream is not for you but if you don't mind having some chemicals in there you know then then this is this is a great product now if you are a purist okay then there is a there's this uh, solution let me show you uh, this is also in my amazon shop so when you go to amazon.com slash shop slash the power of ozone you will come to my ozone uh, amazon shop and so if you are a purist where you want you want the goodness of ozone and you want it as a cream then you can get this here okay it's called lipogel this is from honest 03 which is basically a company by mike Lowe, uh, who is the same guy who runs simply 03 and uh, this costs 42 dollars but it is much much less so this is 1.2 fluid ounces for 42 dollars but this is the ingredients are uh, here um, let me list the ingredients so it's hydrogenated vegetable oil ozonated sunflower seed oil lavandula augustinofolia so lavender oil uh, tocopheryl acetate which i believe is well vitamin e uh, ascorbyl palmitate linalool granule so those are all natural ingredients okay so if you want an ozone cream that is fully natural then you can get this one right but it's much more expensive because you're paying more for for like one a fifth of uh, of the amount uh, if you want the other cream then then this is then you can try this one this is in my opinion this is a great product i'm, I'm actually really exciting that that this is now available for uh, americans on amazon um, all right so now let's go to to the last point which is um testimonials so we have some some great uh some great testimonials in ozone therapy let's start with uh, this here so this is Teresa who said uh, that she watched my video about vaginal insufflations and where I talked that vaginal insufflations are uh, in all likelihood there are a uh, a systemic treatment right and so she tried this and she says so she had uh, headaches she had really really bad headaches she tried all sorts of stuff for the headaches nothing worked then she watched my videos and uh, she also tried some other ozone treatments so she tried uh, ozonated water I, I assume drinking she was drinking the ozonated water nothing worked okay then she said you know maybe this crazy ozone lady maybe she's right maybe there's something to it she tried vaginal insufflations she says at 42 for, to 48 gamma at uh, for 15 minutes at an oxygen flow of 1 16th of a liter per minute and she says within a few minutes after the vaginal insufflations my headache was gone and did not return ozone for the win yes so this is another indication that yes vaginal ozone insufflations can have a strong systemic treatment because if you have headaches you do vaginal insufflations and the headaches go away then clearly this is not just a local treatment right all right 
Another story, another success story is this time it's with direct intravenous ozone injections. So here Adrienne says that she has been, she had been suffering for 33 years from chronic uh, shingles outbreaks. 33 years, like imagine this, this is crazy. Shingles or herpes zoster. And she says she then did ozone direct into her veins, so direct intravenous ozone injections. And she says, I can hardly believe I'm finally done suffering with that awful debilitating condition. If it did nothing else, I'm so grateful for an end to that suffering. So she had chronic outbreaks, uh, shingles outbreaks, nothing helped. Then she did direct intravenous ozone injections and now she's been outbreak free for two years, thanks to DIV. And she says she did nothing else. This is the only thing that she changed. So again, ozone for the win. All right, another story is varicose veins and ozone. So anyone who has bought my book, DIV for the Super Paranoid, has probably seen the pictures and this is yet another picture. So this is from someone who bought my book and who also booked the DIV training. And so she performed the DIV ozone injections on her dad. And so you can see here on the left, this is a before picture. On the right is the after picture, after three DIVs. Now she says she first used a low concentration of around 30 micrograms per milliliter, and it turned out that this was not sufficient. So there was no change in the varicose veins when she injected with 30 micrograms per milliliter. And she also said that she probably injected in the wrong spot. So you you do need to find the right spot in, in the sense that you need it has to be as close as possible to the bulging of the vein. And it also has to be, of course, the bulging vein that you're injecting. If you're injecting some other vein that is not the varicose vein, then of course it, it won't work, right? So then, so there was some trial and error involved. And so she finally got it right. She increased the, uh, the ozone concentration. And what happened, there was some inflammation and this is what you can see in the uh, in the picture on in the after picture that you see still some discoloration. This is uh, most likely because of the inflammation that is sti still healing. So such a thing can happen when inflammation occurs. So it can take some time for those patches for for those brown patches to resolve. But you can see that the bulging of the vein has been reduced considerably. You know, so this is, you know, you know, when I talk about DIV ozone injections and varicose veins, and when I say that DIV ozone injections can reliably and uh, re reliably and uh, reproducibly remove varicose veins, and really it can, sometimes it's just one injection that can accomplish this if you, uh, if you choose a concentration which is high enough, if you manage to inject the right spot, it can be just one injection and it's done then many people are incredulous when I when I mention this and they suddenly they fight me and what you cannot heal a varicose vein and you cannot just reverse a varicose vein. Well, no, that this is it shows you actually can. Now I'm not saying that the valves are fixed. We don't know this, all right? So I, I don't know exactly what happens that produces this effect. Uh, it definitely has to do something with the inflammation. So the vein has to become inflamed. And then when the inflammation resolves, the bulging is gone and the discoloration is gone. But what exactly happens? What brings this about? I don't know. So the valves, no, I doubt that the valves, because varicose va uh, veins have valves that don't uh, function properly. So yeah, I doubt that you can fix the valves, but you can definitely remove the... Uh, the discoloration and the bulging. And it's, it is some sort of sclerosing of the vein. So it's something very si similar that happens also with the other varicose vein techniques where just the, the vein is basically sclerosed. So you can also achieve this by injecting a highly concentrated saline solution. Uh, so you, you also sclerose the vein. There, you, know, you can inject some chemicals. There are also some foams, I think, that they use to sclerose the veins from the inside. So I, it, it's something very similar that appears to be happening with DIV ozone injections. So anyone who wants to know how to do this, uh, you can you can get my, my book. You can get it uh, here on Amazon and print. 
for 25 bucks. It has so far it has a pretty solid five out of five star rating with uh, I believe how many um, let's see how many um, reviews yeah five five ratings so far so you can buy it either as a paperback or you can uh, buy it as as uh, as ebook PDF for 15 bucks. All right, uh, guys, I think this is it. Again, remember to subscribe to my newsletter because the book is coming. I know it's been a long time because I'm rewriting it. I keep reshooting it, but keep the faith. It will be published unless the end of the world hits before, <laughs> before that. <laughs> Uh, that it won't be published, but uh, as long as there will be no catastrophic, cataclysmic end of the world, the book will come out. So make sure to be subscribed to my newsletter. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye, take care. And oh, of course, nothing I said here is to be taken as med medical advice. Nothing, nothing that I mentioned was to be taken as medical advice. It was just me talking, a crazy awesome lady giving her opinion on stuff. All right, thank you very much. Bye-bye.